Hi, and welcome back. So time again to look at a study that looks into the benefits of drinking coffee. This time a slight twist in that it talks about or looks into what happens when you add a dash of milk to your coffee. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this study out of the University of Copenhagen has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Rebecca Dwyer, which covers a study that was published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, which investigated the health benefits of adding milk to coffee and the effects it can have on inflammation and the diseases of aging. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Coffee is the most popular beverage in the world. And as an avid drinker myself, I contribute to the more than 400 billion with the B cups that are consumed every single year. Indeed, more than 450 million cups of coffee are consumed in the United States every single day. So it's no secret that coffee brings joy to people all over the world. It can provide a boost in focus. It brings people together and not to mention that obviously it smells and it tastes absolutely wonderful. Science has shown that just the smell of coffee can make us feel alert. And luckily for coffee fans, there are other health benefits too. Coffee is a source of inflammation fighting antioxidants and drinking it just before exercise has proven fat burning benefits. Now, a new study proposes that adding just a dash of milk that contains protein can boost the health benefits of your cup of coffee. Researchers from the University of Copenhagen in Denmark examined how antioxidants called polyphenols interact with amino acids. These are the building blocks of proteins. And they found that combining them has twice the effect on fighting cellular inflammation as polyphenols alone. Polyphenols can be found in many foods, including coffee and tea, fruits, vegetables, red wine, and thankfully, even beer. Like other antioxidants, past studies have shown that some polyphenols can prevent and slow the oxidation of healthy chemicals and therefore protect our bodies from disease. Polyphenols are thought to do this in part by controlling inflammation, a complex immune response involving cells called macrophages that release several inflammatory mediators. Inflammation helps protect us against infection, but if it is controlled properly by our body, it can lead to diseases like type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Caffeic acid and chlorogenic acid are polyphenols that are well known to have strong antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. But the researchers wanted to find out if these reactions that the polyphenols have with other chemicals can further affect our immune regulation. Adducts are products that are made when two or more molecules come together. In this case, the amino acid cysteine, cis, that is found in milk products was combined with caffeic acid, CA, and chlorogenic acid, CGA, which are both found in coffee. They were combined to make the adducts CA cis and CGA cis. To support this research, the authors positively showed in a previous study the polyphenols do bind to proteins in coffee that has already had milk added to it. Professor Marianne Nissan Lund from the University of Copenhagen and co-author of both studies I mentioned so far said, our result demonstrates that the reaction between polyphenols and proteins also happens in some of the coffee drinks with milk that we studied. In fact, the reaction happens so quickly that it's been difficult to avoid in any of the foods that we've studied so far. In this study, the researchers use RNA sequencing to study the immune regulating effects of CA cis and CGA cis in macrophage cells subjected to artificial inflammation. 
Macrophages are a type of white blood cell that play an important role in the human immune system and carry out various functions, including engulfing and digesting microorganisms. They also tested the effects of caffeic acid and chlorogenic acid in isolation and then compared them to a control group of macrophages not exposed to the polyphenols or to the cis adducts. As expected, the polyphenols CA and CGA prevented inflammatory responses. In particular, the production of reactive oxygen species PGE2 and the cytokines interleukin-6 and tumor necrosis factor. But when the polyphenols CA and CGA were combined with amino acid cysteines found in milk proteins, the anti-inflammatory effects received a considerable boost. Macrophage cells exposed to polyphenols on their own showed more than 2.5 times as much tumor necrosis factor activity as they did in the face of polyphenol cysteine adducts. However, there was an exception with the reactive oxygen species. It inexplicably increased in the macrophages when the polyphenol amino acid combination was present. This was when it was compared to the polyphenol on its own. Professor Andrew Williams of the University of Copenhagen and senior author of the study said, it is interesting to have now observed the anti-inflammatory effect in cell experiments. And obviously this has only made us more interested in understanding the health effects in greater detail. So the next step will be to study the effects in animals. Obviously, further research is needed to figure out why and what these results mean practically for human health. The study only examined how a single type of immune mediator reacts to coffee-like chemicals in a laboratory setting. The researchers conclude in their paper that our results can be used as an important reference in applications of adducts formed from phenolic compounds and amino acids in future functional food or medicinal products that aim to modulate metabolic, neurological or immune related diseases. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, so I usually drink between three and five cups of coffee a day. And if it's five, two of those normally have a dollop of whipping cream. That's what the Americans call uh, heavy cream. Uh, I've checked and cysteine is present in whipping cream. 30 grams of cream will give you four milligrams of cysteine. Uh, let me know in the YouTube video comment section, do you take milk or cream with your coffee? And I'm talking about the whole food version, not the hideous powdered Frankenstein versions of milk or cream. Well, that's it for today. As always, please take care, stay safe until we meet again.